Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Peter Steinwald from Upland, California. We're currently at Prado Dog Park here in Chino, California, a dog training facility here in Southern California. I'm out here today training uh, field trial dogs, hunting dogs, uh, and, and gun dogs, and uh, running them through a series of uh, training events to make them uh, better hunting dogs or competition dogs. I started doing this about five years ago and I got into it with my first hunting dog. So I got my first dog and I, wanted to, I just wanted a hunting dog. I just wanted a dog that would go out there and pick up my ducks or pick up my pheasants and it just blossomed in. It just, it's just something that, that took over and, and I got into competitions, I got into hunt tests, I got into field trials and it's something that has just taken on a life of its own. I'm an amateur trainer, so I train my own uh, my own hunting dogs or my own competition dogs. And what I usually do is I'll take uh, some young dogs, I'll raise them up, and I'll get them ready to go out on their own and become hunting dogs or competition dogs or move on to an actual a pro trainer. And I'll I'll place those dogs, I'll I'll sell them, and then that will fund my uh, my competitions. That, that enables me to compete my own dogs, so without uh, using family funds. I train retrievers because out of all of the dogs that I've been around, retrievers are my just, I have a spot for them. My first dog was a Labrador retriever. Um, what I do, my hunting, really calls for a retriever. And I think that the retriever, I can hunt any bird with a retriever. I can hunt a pheasant with a retriever. I can hunt a trucker with a retriever. I can hunt a duck with a retriever. And that, that, that retriever, when it comes to the dog sports, the retrieving sports are my favorite. I love field trials, I like hunt tests, so those dogs just, just meld well with what, what I have, with my goals and what I like doing. What excites me more about a Labrador Retriever or a Golden Retriever or a Chessie Retriever is I personally feel, one, the skill set for that Retriever is much higher than a pointing dog. Um, it's more technical training, so when we're training a Retriever, there's more aspects to the training. It's, um, I know that it, you know, pointers are very nice dogs. I've had pointers before, they're fun dogs, but with a, with a, with a retriever, the, the training is much more in depth and it, it's much more challenging to me to train a retriever. When you can take a dog and send it out on a 400 plus blind retrieve, there, there ain't nothing that competes with that. Not in my mind, not in my heart. Here, good dog. In my training, and I would any any amateur and in any pro is going to start their dog on a program. So we take a puppy or say a six month old dog, seven month old dog, and we put it through a program. Um, that program starts off with you know establishing a prey drive. All my dogs, we go through force fetch, then we follow a force to pile, and we do a stop to pile, then we do the T pattern, and we get that dog ready for transitional work, which includes um, water force, swim by, so that that sets up all the building blocks so that we can take that dog out and we can run those blinds, we can steady that dog up, we can focus that dog's energy, we can get our birds, we can get our march, then that program is a program that is the same for a hunting dog, that program is the same for a hunt test dog, and that, do that program is especially called for for a competition dog. Today, like this morning when we first started, we started with puppies. 
puppies really, and they're just going through where they're becoming steady. I like to steady my dogs a bit late. We did what's called walking singles, where my wife went out, she threw ducks for them, they were steady, they just simply ran out and got the bird. Then we moved over to where we had a little watermark where we ran from a mound and it had a little bit of an angle into it. The gun was set up on the dike. So now we're looking at our transitional dogs, our derby dogs, and some of our older dogs to where they had to get out there and make the decision to get into that water and they, to, to push off of the thrower and go up there and get that, that bird. So we've seen several dogs do that. Most of the dogs on that did very, very well. And then we moved over and we did a longer mark. And that mark was a bit tricky because it had some toolies in place. It was swimming past what's called the old fall because where we had ran earlier. So, and then on our last, our final series, or our final mark, that's the most exciting mark because now you're taking, um, whether it's the older dogs, you would expect for them. And my oldest dog is five years old and that's a little yellow female. Um, then my other dogs, four, year old, four years old. And then we went down to a bunch of two year olds. So now what we're doing is we're taking those little dogs and they have to look past where that other mark was thrown and then we're videoing on that same dike so they're looking and they're going okay. So they got to look past that on the far bank which is probably about a 245 yard mark and they got to look out there and we put what's called a kite which is a big white diamond on it. So then they look over there and they go oh there's the gun. Well, then my wife throws a big bird and they see it up against a tree. Now when you cut them loose, when you say their name and they're released on their name, they gotta push off that old mark, run that field, get into that water, go through those toolies, get up on that dike without going to the old fall, push off that old fall, get into the water, and then push off that gun, get up on the bank, get that bird and come back. And I think the majority of the dogs did a very good job. I think the dogs that had a problem, they didn't want to get on the point. So they, they've been trained where they want to go to that old fall. They want to push off. So they, they want to swim around that point. So all I did is, and this is where the water force comes in, just hit them with a whistle. They sit, they, tre they tread the water, and you give them, in this case it was a left back, to tell them it's okay. You can get on that point. Get on that point, stay the line, and go get your bird. Then that's just dog training and a little bit of balance. You gotta put balance, because if they start swimming around all the points, they're gonna get lost, and in a field trial, you're never gonna win, and in a hunt test, you could get lost with a properly placed bird. The Labrador Retriever, one, it just got a special place in my heart. It was my first dog. Um, for the most part, they are the most tractable. They're a great beginning dog. They're a great amateur dog. Um, when, when a person is doing their homework, looking for a dog, uh, a Labrador Retriever, if you go out and you watch your hunt test, if you watch your field trials, you get a nice dog that's gonna work with you, that's gonna be easy to train, that won't be high maintenance, that you don't have to bring, you know, you don't have to train four, five, seven days a week. There are some Labradors, and I own a couple, that do take more training than others, but for the most part, they're a very user-friendly animal. Golden Retrievers, beautiful dog. But it can be a bit complicated for the most part. Um, they can be a high drive animal, uh, may not take a whole lot of pressure. You need to know when to pull back and let that dog be a dog. Um, they've got a killer nose. I mean, their dog, their nose I think is second to none. If you put a bird in the toolies, if you put a bird in high cover, that Golden Retriever is going to get that bird for you. On the other hand, when you're running those little dogs in field trials or hunt tests, they can be a slave to their nose and you gotta teach them to pass them to, to, to run past that and go and get the mark that they were sent out for. Dog training to me has absolutely engulfed my life. It's a huge passion of mine. Um, I, try, I do it six days a week. I do have a professional career, but I can't wait. Dog training is always on my mind. When I'm at work, I'm thinking about 
the mark I'm gonna throw. I'm thinking about maybe a little dog uh, the previous day had a hard day, and I can't wait to get back out there and build that little dog up. Um, when I, I'm looking, I got, I'm looking at diagrams, I'm thinking of what I'm gonna do next, I'm thinking of my next dog. I'm, I've already got six months of, of, of trials planned. I'm working, I'm thinking how I'm gonna work that into my personal life, how I'm gonna make my wife happy, and how I'm gonna get to these trials. It just absolutely, it's just, I just have a huge passion for it. I get young dogs, and it's just like every time I get a young dog, it just rekindles that passion. When that, like, like today when we ran those puppies. When you take a young puppy and it's done force fetched and it's starting to be steady and now it can really mark. Now it's steady, it's got focus, it's watching the birds and you can see all the little lights clicking on that young dog. It, it gives me chills every time. I, I, I can do seven of them and every time I bring that young dog out and I can just see it just run out there 150 yards, 200 yards and just front foot, what we call front foot in that bird, you just go, that's a special dog. And when, when we can do that, it just, it, it's awesome. When you can say, hey, I taught that dog to do that, it just, it's an awesome feeling. It just, I, I love it. I, I can't get enough of it.